Hi, and welcome to this video about the structure and bonding of carboxylic acid derivatives. Let's briefly review the reactivity of the carbonyl group. The carbon atom is sp2 hybridized with approximately 120 degree angles between the sigma bonds. Because of the electronegativity differences between the carbon and oxygen atoms, the carbon has less electron density and is partially positive, delta plus, and the oxygen atom has more electron density and is partially negative, delta minus. So the oxygen atom can act as a nucleophile or as a base, while the carbonyl atom is electrophilic and will react with a variety of nucleophiles. Because the carbonyl group is planar, nucleophiles can react from the top or bottom face of the carbonyl. In this section, we're looking at the reactions of nucleophiles with polar pi bonds bearing leaving groups. These groups are commonly called carboxylic acid derivatives, but they don't have to be carboxylic acids at all. The carbonyl oxygen could be a nitrogen or sulfur atom instead, and the OH group could be any other atom or leaving group. Overall in these reactions, we observe a substitution of a nucleophile for the leaving group, although not by an SN2 mechanism. Occasionally, a second nucleophile can also react. We will study a number of different leaving groups and nucleophiles. A general idea is that if the nucleophile and electrophile are not reactive enough when they collide to overcome the activation energy, then no reaction occurs. There are two general ways to make the reaction work. Make the nucleophile more reactive, or activate it or make it stronger by deprotonating it, and or make the electrophile more reactive, activating it or making it stronger by protonating it. Here's the general mechanism for this reaction under basic conditions, where the nucleophile is negatively charged or neutral. The nucleophile and electrophilic carbon atom collide and form a new nucleophile carbon bond. The pi bond breaks, with the pi electrons going to the oxygen atom. This first step forms a tetrahedral intermediate. This first step is the rate determining step of the reaction. If the nucleophile bears a positive charge and a proton, it can be deprotonated in the final step of the reaction. Overall, the nucleophile has substituted for the leaving group via a tetrahedral intermediate. Notice again that this is not an SN2 reaction. In principle, each step of this reaction is reversible, but the reversibility depends on the activation energy required. Next, we'll look at the general mechanism under acidic conditions. In this situation, a weak electrophile is activated in the first step by an acid-base reaction. In the second step, the nucleophile and electrophile collide, forming a tetrahedral intermediate. This is the rate determining step of the reaction, just like in the basic reaction. Two subsequent acid-base steps transfer a proton to the leaving group, making it a better leaving group, more stable than if it broke away on its own. The tetrahedral intermediate collapses, with the non-bonding electrons on the oxygen atom pushing down, and simultaneously the carbon leaving group bond breaks, with the leaving group taking the electrons. In the last step of the reaction, the carbonyl is deprotonated, resulting in a neutral final product. Although the acid catalyzed mechanism is longer than the basic mechanism, the key steps are the same. All the other steps are proton transfers. The next step will be to learn how to predict whether a nucleophile electrophile combination will react, and if the reaction will favor the starting materials, the tetrahedral intermediate, or the products.